2010 was an unforgettable year in politics. Here to present the 2010 Political Awards is Daily Beast reporter Sam Jacobs. Sam's awards are posted on DailyBeast.com. Sam, first up, we have the Muskie Award given to that person whose tears flowed like melting snow. That's right. We give this award to John Boehner, whose uh, return to Washington or, or his success in Washington may make crying cool once again. This is a Republican who will cry at the drop of a hat. He will cry when discussing legislation. He will, he will cry when he announces victory. He'll cry when he even talks about crying. Uh, so here's somebody who, who's become sort of a national treasure of waterworks. I, I love that picture of him that we put up. <laughs> and by the way, when he's accepting the award, you guys better get your handkerchiefs ready because he's going to cry up a storm. There won't be a dry eye in the house. <laughs> Especially not his. All right, now how about the Elmo Award given to the most noteworthy tickler? Uh, this might be my favorite moment of the political year. You may recall a former Newark Democrat uh, representative, Eric Massa. He went on to Glenn Beck's show, and Beck thought he would get uh, the skinny on the corruption in the White House. Instead, he got a, a different sort of confessional. Massa told him that for his 50th birthday party, he had a massive tickle fight with his male staffers. Yeah, that doesn't usually play out well in Congress. No. Now, and you know, he was promising, too, before he started tickling everybody. Oh, well. <laughs> now, the Pat O'Brien Award given to the person who uh, left the most ill-advised voicemail message. You know, we all send messages that we wish we could take back. Uh, in the case of Virginia Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, she did just that this year. Uh, almost 20 years ago, Anita Hill accused Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment uh, during his hearings in front of Congress. Now, just this year, uh, Thomas's wife, Virginia, left the professor, Anita Hill, a message on her voicemail asking her to pray and consider apologizing to her husband for what she said she had done. At least she wasn't drunk when she left the message. We don't think, at least. No, I, I, don't, I don't think she was. <laughs> I, I never want to see you again. Not that I've ever done that, I hear. Anyway, next up is the Bluto Award given to the most successful college prankster. Who's that? Uh, well, Rand Paul, the future Republican senator from Kentucky, proved that the Tea Party and frat party are not mutually exclusive. Uh, we heard tales of his undergraduate pranks where he and a, a fellow member of a secret brotherhood kidnapped a woman, uh, brought her down to a river, and encouraged her to bow down to their divinity, who they called Aqua Buddha. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, but he won. You know that that ad didn't work against him. No, I think that ad by his opponent, uh, Jack Conway, really really sort of backfired. And absolutely. And finally, one award not mentioned in your article: the Annie Oakley Award given to the politician with the quickest trigger. Yeah, I, I have to give this to Republican uh, candidate Sharon Engel out in Nevada, who certainly brought some frontier charisma to the campaign. She, of course, talked frequently or, or certainly more than made some people comfortable about the need for Second Amendment remedies in order to change what was going on in Congress. Uh, what went less reported is that she liked to hint during at least one interview that she was packing heat on the campaign trail. <laughs> well, luckily she didn't use that. She didn't have much heat. She lost, and uh, now has to seek her remedies elsewhere. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.